Ooh, look at these guys. Oh man. It's only supposed to rain early this morning. And then in about an hour supposed or so it's supposed to clear up. And I think these guys are not gonna miss their ride for the rest of the day. <laughs> so right now they get a little bit wet and they're shiny chrome machines are going to have some uh, road grime and water spots on them a little bit but the dude there in the back ain't wearing a helmet and i i get it just not the look you know it's just not the look for harleys but man it's your it's your freaking skull <laughs> you know what i mean Anyway, um, you, you guys know what it is. It's another episode of Goat in a Car. And I think we've kind of already discovered why Goat in a Car is happening today. Yes. Yes. It's because it's raining. <laughs> oh, boy. You know... If I get caught in the rain, like out, if I'm already riding and stuff, that's one thing. But leaving the goat cave when it's raining, that's a whole different thing. That's not something that uh, that I that I'm up for, really. If it's raining when I'm leaving the house, screw that. I'm taking the cage. But like I said, it's supposed to clear up in about you know an hour or so. And then the rest of the day is supposed to be good. So, but still, I don't want to get wet on the way to where I'm going right now. And, I, you know, I have a rain suit. And, and it, it, it's like, it's made by Built, B-I-L-T, Built Rain Suit. And you know what? It works pretty good. It, because uh, I, I used it once. And it worked really well. And I enjoyed it. Um, but the thing is, is that even if I can stay dry, the bike still gets wet and very dirty. And, you know, I've got the time to clean it and all that stuff, but it's kind of a pain in the ass, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a car wearing a helmet and he's out there on the bike with no helmet. Oh man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> the contrast, the irony of it all, yes. <laughs> oh boy. So anyway, yeah, we're doing goat in a car and you can see it's not really raining that bad, but it is enough to get wet and it's enough to get dirty. So I'm in the car. And one of the reasons why I haven't done goat in a car in a while is a couple of reasons. Um, first, I don't really uh, ride in the car that often. Number two, um, I've been doing the live stream chats in the goat lounge. And, you know, we talk a lot in those so i didn't really have much to say per you know per se um while riding in a car but i was feeling pretty good when i got up just a little bit ago and i thought you know what i think it is time to do goat in a car so here we are and and i'm feeling pretty good about it actually because i'm not getting wet <laughs> Oh, man. Yes. So, I, I don't really have anything to talk about, necessarily. I'm just sitting here, just, uh, just having a chat with all of you out there. And you're, you're probably thinking it's odd to wear a helmet while in a car. And that may be true. That may be true. But I have my reasons. And the reason is so, um, so all of you can hear me better. Because if I just use the 360 up on the windshield, um, the audio isn't so great. 
that kind of gets washed out with the sound of the car. Even though this is a very quiet riding car, it's, it's not even really a car. It's like an SUV type thing. And uh, yeah, so that's the reason why. And, and, and then there's another reason, uh, because it's funny. <laughs> it's funny to see a person in a car wearing a helmet. And if that can uh, brighten y'all's day just a little bit to see uh, a crazy goat in a car wearing a helmet, then I'm totally down for that. Totally down for it, absolutely. Yes. And uh, speaking about the goat lounge... I, if you guys haven't tuned in for the Goat Lounge, which is just a nightly um, live stream chat where we talk about whatever comes up in chat. It's, uh, it's just me. I've got no script. And all of you who decide to join the Goat Lounge by coming in and joining in the live chat. And basically what we do is... Uh, we just kind of hang out and talk. And if if anybody has any questions or whatever for me, then then I uh, address those questions and, and answer them to the best of my ability. And also on top of that, we've kind of developed a uh, not kind of we definitely have developed kind of a uh, a family atmosphere, like a two wheeled family atmosphere in there and. And uh, we really enjoy just getting together and hanging out. And, and um, anybody can talk about whatever they want. Um, yeah, it's not, it doesn't have to be just about motorcycles. You know, we talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about things that are going on in, in the motorcycle world as well. In, in the uh, YouTuber vlogger world, we talk about things like that. People ask questions about, you know, what kind of bike should be their first bike or because they're thinking about getting into riding or um, sometimes maintenance questions things like that so you know anything's on the table sometimes we discuss how um, current world events and trends are affecting uh, the motorcycle industry that kind of thing so anything's on the table it doesn't have to even you know be two-wheel related it, it can be about anything um, so yeah if you guys out there who are watching this video who aren't aware that we're doing these live chats um, or um, didn't know um, well not aware is the same thing as not knowing about it but anyway the reason why I'm mentioning it is just one for something to talk to right now while I'm driving this car and two so that um, more of you can can stop by and join us and the thing is is that you don't even have to uh, ride or anything to join us. I mean, everybody is welcome um, because it, it's a fun place you know, for anybody um, to come and hang out and, and just, you know, be a around cool people. You know, everybody that comes into the chat is just so cool. We don't have any trolls or anything like that. Just everybody's ca cool, calm, collected, and funny. So if you haven't checked it out, usually um, we do these at 10 15 central standard time on the weekdays but then on the weekends saturdays and sundays um i try to uh move it to an hour earlier at 9 15 so if you haven't checked it out come on by we we'd love to have you let's see what else yes um as far as the the latest updates to the channel to the bike whatever um last night i kind of showed some of you that i got a fourth camera for the bike and that is mounted on the right side of the bike low down um on in in the like on the side of the fairing and it gets a low side view which shows uh, the low side view of the bike. <laughs> Ta-da! No, it's uh, I wanted I wanted something low down on the side to catch basically the front wheel action. Some of you had mentioned getting a front view uh, of the, like the front wheel and 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 stuff, and I thought 
that would be a great idea. It had been something that I had been considering for a long time. I didn't come up with the idea to put a low front view camera on a bike. Um, the first time I ever saw it was Ghost Rider. In his videos, he had the low mount camera down, I think, on the lower right side, very similar to what I'm doing. And you could see his front wheel, you know, the suspension working and, and, uh, and, you know, coming off the ground and power wheelies and just straight up wheelies and things like that. And because the camera's mounted fairly low, I mean, it's, it's probably, it's probably about peg height. The bottom part of it sticks out just a little bit further than the pegs. And it's, it's probably just like a half an inch lower than the peg. But because it's further up on the bike, um, I don't think it's going to drag on a on a really tight right turn. I'm hoping it doesn't. I haven't taken any really tight right turns as of yet, um, but um, we're going to find out. Um, in the in the video that I'm about to release today, uh, that I haven't made public yet, uh, but I will in just a little bit. Um, y'all will have seen the first shots from that camera and i have to admit they're they're pretty pretty cool it's pretty interesting to watch it's it's a it's an angle that you don't see in uh in other videos that i've noticed maybe they're out there but i haven't seen them like i said the only one i've seen with this view was ghost rider from a long time ago so credit to him for for thinking of that view and planting that seed in my head uh, so many years ago. And here we are today, and I, now I've got my own front wheel cam. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, y'all will have seen that video most likely before you're seeing this one. So you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. So that is a new update. So I will have to test it more, like, like whenever I uh, rode it for the first time, which was last night, um, I took some fairly intense right turns. There, there's like a couple of them, but not all the way down. Um, the, the, of course, there's going to be turns that require more lean angle, and um, ho hopefully um, it's good. If, if it's not good in the position that it's in, I can flip it up and, and get more clearance out of it if I have to. Right now, I have it in the down position. But if it, if, it, if it becomes a problem, or if I think it's going to be a problem, then I'll just flip it up, and then, and then we're good. Then the mount's good. As far as the mount goes, yeah, that was a complex mount to make. It was, I, I don't know if any of you know this, most of you probably do, um, that I make my own uh, camera mounts out of uh, flat stock steel that, that I just pick up from Home Depot. It's like flat steel I don't want to say it's a rod, but it's just flat steel strips, but it's fairly thick. It's like quarter, I don't even know if it's a full quarter of an inch thick. I would think just a little bit thinner than a quarter of an inch thick, about one inch wide. And then what I do is I get a hammer and a vise and a, uh, an air powered like, like a metal cutting wheel and a drill. And then I can make the mounts any way I want. You know, I just get a hammer and I put it in the vise and, and I have it on the bike and then I kind of, you know, fit it to the bike wherever it is that I want. I find a, a factory bolt location and then um, just use that and then, you know, just make it work somehow. And I've been successful at that, but I will tell you, you know, I've got the, ca the cockpit mounting cam bracket, the cam, the cam mount that I made, that one you know it wasn't too bad and then uh and then i've got the one for the tail that one was a little bit more complex because it had to come out from inside like where the like the little tool area is and uh that one t was a little bit more complicated the one that's down on the back wheel i just used the passenger foot peg arm i took the 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 peg out of the foot peg arm and then just uh mounted uh the camera mount to that so it was it, it turned the right rear passenger foot peg uh arm into a camera arm basically um so that one wasn't complicated at all because it was already built basically and then 
the one that's down low on the side of the bike now, um, that one was by far the most complicated. One for finding where to, uh, a factory bolt location was to mount it to. And then also I had to make it, snake it basically out through the, uh, through the side panel vent. And so through the fairing vent is where it comes out. And I haven't showed you guys that yet, but I will. Um, at least, you know, you'll be able to see it coming out of the vent. And what I mounted it to was uh, the side of the engine. There was like an, an open threaded bolt hole on the side of one of the, the cases on the side of the engine. And I used that, and then I used one of the actual case bolts. So it, it has two uh, bolts that are mounting to it. But I, I got to tell you, it was a little bit scary messing with it because... Um, I would never want to, you know, do anything that would uh, harm the side of the motor. Um, but, but I, but I got it. I, I, I think it's going to be okay. But fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, fingers definitely crossed. Um, but it's solid. And and then I put, uh, you know, like some things on there to to absorb the vi vibration, so it doesn't zap the the image stabilization circuitry inside the cameras. You know, a lot of you guys out there, if you're trying to mount cameras to the bike, um, you're going to come up with a with a couple of issues because these are these are the issues that I came up that that, that I had to uh, deal with. One was typically with the camera mounts, they just give you like like a mount that's got double sided tape on it, and then you just stick it to somewhere on the bike, like on the fairing or whatever. I don't trust that, especially, you know, at high rates of speed. It's just too much wind and vibration, and I would never trust double-sided tape to to hold my camera on in, in, in wind and, and, and vibration and all that stuff, and going over bumps and all that stuff, and it just, no way. The cameras are too expensive. They cost like four to five hundred dollars, you know, on average. And uh, that's just a little bit expensive, you know, to be risking it with double-sided tape. Look at this person right here. So, um, so I, I said, screw that. They're not strong enough, so I need to make my own mounts. Um, so that's what started that whole thing. But as far as the double-sided tape, that's an issue. And then the other thing is, is... You know, say you do make your own mounts and they're much more sturdy, well then the vibrations from the engine are going to be translated directly into the camera. And that's going to mess up the very sensitive image stabilization circuitry that's inside. The, the, the components that are inside the camera are very sensitive. Um, and if it gets vibration, from the motor put directly into the camera it's going to mess up the the video it, it'll you'll see it I, I i've talked to some of you guys out there about this problem because y'all are experiencing it it'll cause the video feed to just lock up and you'll still have audio but but y your footage is gone you can't you, it just it just locks up on one section of the video like a freeze frame and then it, it that's it you're toast and on occasion, that still happens to me, but not very often these days, because uh, because I put some, uh, you know, vibration isolators in between the mounts and the uh, cameras, and that seemed to help a lot. This freaking goober right here. So, uh, so anyway. Um, that's uh, that's how I've mounted the cameras, and I know a lot of a lot of you out there have have requested to see exactly how it's done and that kind of thing. Um, but I have not made any you know videos on how to make camera mounts. That that could be something I could do, but that's not really you know what this channel is about. This channel is you know just really about the riding you know for the most part, and. Um, Future plans for the channel may be, um, at some point, we're not there yet, is to get a van uh, so that I can transport the bikes and then, and then do some traveling. Um, that's something that I really want to do. Um, 
First, we will travel from the goat cave to the local tracks. And then we'll get some track footage in, because I know a lot of you guys have been asking, wh when are we going to uh, be out on the track? And hopefully this year. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. And then secondly, um, what, once uh, once we travel to the local tracks and kind of get a get the uh, the feel for what you know what's going on, what to expect, and what we need, and that kind of thing, then what we'll do is we'll we'll maybe hit the road on occasion and travel to some different locations, like maybe Tale of the Dragon or uh, or who knows where. It could be anywhere, you know, just maybe to a different city, just to you know meet up with some of you guys out there. So that's future plans um, and, and what to watch out for. But anyway, I'm about to uh, be where I got to be. And I want to thank everybody out there for watching the video, supporting the channel, and um, finding your way back after I deleted the original channel. Um, I have my reasons for doing that, but I want to appreciate all of you loyal Crash Test Goat video viewers out there and supporters for uh, regardless of me uh, deleting the original channel for you guys taking the time to type in crash test goat in the search box at the top of every single page on YouTube it's just like a Google search and all you have to do is just type crash test goat and then my channel will pop up and you're good to go all right y'all peace out talk to you later have a good one bye